Amidst the intense conflict between Israel and Hamas, four permanent members of the United Nations Security Council, the United States, the United Kingdom, France, and China, have deployed significant military forces in the southeastern waters of the Middle East, indicating an escalation of regional tensions. On November 26, the U.S. aircraft carrier USS Eisenhower, accompanied by a frigate and three destroyers, crossed the Strait of Hormuz to position itself in the Persian Gulf. This maneuver was supported by French early warning aircraft and Rafale fighter jets. Additionally, an Ohio-class submarine, armed with up to 154 Tomahawk land attack missiles, had arrived in the region earlier in November. The U.S. 52nd Task Force, entrenched in the area, possesses four Avenger-class mine countermeasures ships, and the U.S. Coast Guard has stationed six patrol boats in Bahrain's Manama port. The U.S. Navy's Bataan Amphibious Ready Group is located in the Red Sea, comprising an amphibious assault ship akin to a small aircraft carrier, an amphibious transport dock ship transporting marines, an amphibious dock landing ship for launching landing crafts, and a destroyer. The United Kingdom maintains a prolonged air and naval presence in the Persian Gulf and the Indian Ocean through Operation Kippian. The UK has deployed three mine hunters, a frigate and a Bay-class landing ship to the region. The Chinese Navy has also dispatched a considerable presence with eight warships in the area. Two Type 055 destroyers are patrolling the Arabian Sea, while the 45th and 44th Escort Task Forces are operating in the Gulf of Aden and the Eastern Arabian Sea, respectively. This significant international military assembly in the region complicates the security situation. A notable incident occurred on November 26. The merchant vessel MV Central Park issued a distress signal after unidentified armed individuals boarded the oil tanker. The crew members acted decisively, locking themselves in a secure room and swiftly sending out a distress signal. In response to an emergency on the merchant vessel MV Central Park, the United States Navy destroyer USS Mason swiftly dispatched a helicopter to the tanker's location, demanding the release of the vessel. Five armed individuals were observed fleeing towards Yemen on a speedboat. The USS Mason deployed a visit, board, search, and seizure team to intercept the speedboat with support from an armed U.S. military helicopter. The five armed individuals ultimately surrendered and are currently being interrogated aboard the USS Mason by the U.S. Navy's Anti-Piracy Division. The interrogation revealed that these individuals were not Yemeni Houthi militants, as initially suspected, but Somali pirates. This discovery raises questions about how Somali pirates obtained specific details about the tanker's ownership and accurately pinpointed its location, especially given their escape route pointed towards Yemen, not Somalia, suggesting a possible link with Houthi militants. In the early hours of November 27, around 1.41 local time in Sana'a, Yemen, Two short-range ballistic missiles were launched from Houthi-controlled areas towards the USS Mason, landing approximately 10 nautical miles away. Given the distance of at least 200 kilometers between the Houthis and these vessels, it seems unlikely that the Houthis could have obtained the precise coordinates of the USS Mason and MV Central Park. However, Chinese naval vessels located 80 kilometers west of the incident, equipped with advanced radar systems, including missile destroyers and frigates, theoretically could have located these ships. Consequently, some observers speculate that the Chinese Navy might have colluded with regional forces, providing crucial coordinate information. While there is no direct evidence to support this, such speculations have raised strategic concerns. U.S. military officials have also acknowledged the possible existence of such cooperation. Furthermore, some U.S. military commentators have pointed out that the Chinese Navy's escort task force seems to act only when Chinese vessels are attacked, and they question the combat readiness of the Chinese Marines in training and executing boarding operations. A U.S. general suggested that the Houthis might have warned the Chinese not to intervene, However, this interpretation might oversimplify the actual situation. If there truly is a connection between the Houthi militants and the Chinese Navy, it might extend beyond a mere understanding of non-intervention. 
Instead, it could involve information sharing and tactical coordination, particularly in targeting and military operations. The Houthi militants' unsuccessful attack on the USS Mason has garnered significant attention in the United States, indicating a concerted effort to undermine the prestige of the U.S. Navy. Observers speculate that the Chinese Navy might be colluding with regional forces, providing key coordinate information, while the Houthis carry out the actual attacks. Even though this short-range missile strike was imprecise, there is concern that China could supply more advanced missile technology to the Houthis, threatening the last of the U.S. warships. Additionally, the radar systems of the Chinese Navy, capable of terminal guidance, heighten the threat to U.S. naval vessels. These suspicions are supported by multiple reliable U.S. sources, suggesting a significant escalation in the threat posed by Houthi militants to U.S. naval forces. In the Arabian Sea, two major Chinese naval warships, the Type 055 destroyers Dalian and Yan'an, are under scrutiny. Their actions appear to contradict the Chinese Communist Party's stated aim of maintaining global peace and the security of maritime navigation. Instead, indicating a tendency to create disturbances in the Middle East. Meanwhile, there is a consensus within the United States on its policies towards China, Russia, Iran, and North Korea, emphasizing no concessions to these nations. In the current international context, the U.S. has accelerated its response, especially considering the CCP's handling of the second wave of the pandemic. On November 26, marking a further escalation of tensions in the Middle East. The U.S. Navy's Eisenhower Carrier Strike Group entered the Persian Gulf, demonstrating America's resolve and influence in the region. The strike group includes advanced Ticonderoga-class guided missile cruisers and Arleigh Burke-class guided missile destroyers, as well as the French Aquitaine-class large frigate. The French frigate, in particular, has exceptional regional anti-air capabilities. And can launch long-range land attack cruise missiles, enhancing the combat power of the entire strike group. While crossing the Strait of Hormuz, the strike group adopted a linear formation with approximately one kilometer between each ship. The U.S. Navy also received support from the French Air Force, including Rafale fighters and Hawkeye early warning aircraft, reflecting close collaboration with allies. To effectively counter potential challenges from China, the U.S. has notably shifted its military focus to the Western Pacific. According to Deutsche Welle, the U.S. is making significant investments in the Kadena Air Base in Okinawa, Japan. Kadena Air Base, the largest and most capable U.S. Air Force base in the Western Pacific besides Guam, is strategically positioned against China. The base hosts the formidable 18th Wing, equipped with a variety of fighter aircraft, including F-15 Eagles and F-22 Raptors, as well as reconnaissance planes, early warning aircraft, refueling tankers, and Patriot missile systems. Located just 800 kilometers from Shanghai and 1,800 kilometers from Beijing, F-22s can reach Beijing in less than an hour. The base is only 600 kilometers from Taiwan's northern tip. In the event of a Chinese military action against Taiwan, Kadena Air Base would be at the forefront of the conflict. On November 20th, the Fourth Fighter Squadron of the Hill Air Force Base in Utah, United States, deployed its F-35 fighters to Kadena Air Base in Japan. The F-35, dubbed the "Quarterback in the Sky," is known for its software architecture that allows frequent updates. While the aircraft's external appearance remains unchanged, its combat capabilities can undergo fundamental changes. The U.S. deployment to Kadena Air Base encompasses not only advanced fighter jets, but also the Patriot missile defense system and Tomahawk missiles. The base houses a substantial personnel deployment, including 18,000 military personnel and expeditionary forces. This series of military deployments involves significant financial and time investment, and is expected to remain in place for an extended period. These U.S. military deployments at Kadena Air Base, entailing considerable financial and time investment, are expected to be long-term to ensure a rapid and effective response to potential conflicts with the People's Liberation Army of China. 
These actions are a critical component of the United States' comprehensive military strategy in the Pacific region. As an extension of this strategy, the U.S. has initiated the deployment of intermediate range ballistic missile systems and defense systems around China, expected to be completed by 2024. The focus is on land based deployments of Tomahawk missiles with a range of 1,800 kilometers and the development of the standard missile 6 Block IB, likely capable of hypersonic attacks on surface targets. Both systems can be launched using the Strategic Medium Range Firepower, or SMRF, system and aim to strengthen missile defense. U.S. Army Pacific Commander General Flynn confirmed this at the Halifax International Security Forum. The SMRF system, nicknamed Typhoon, can be considered a trailer version of the MK 41 vertical launch system used on ships, with each launch battery comprising four launch trailers. These can be airlifted by C 17 aircraft, each carrying four Tomahawk cruise missiles. The Typhoon completed its Tomahawk test firing by the end of June, officially becoming operational. The first ground based missile battery is expected to be fully operational by September next year. These launchers can be deployed on unmanned islands in the first island chain or among the nine U.S. military bases in the Philippines and potentially on ships. The long range hypersonic weapon, with an expected range of about 2,775 kilometers, was also deployed this year. The U.S. also possesses numerous short range cruise missiles launched from aircraft carriers, submarines, or aircraft capable of striking Chinese ships and onshore targets. Stealth aircraft or submarines can deliver these missiles deeper into mainland China. Their advantages include smaller size, lower cost, and greater quantity. Additionally, the U.S. is enhancing cooperation with the Philippines, Taiwan, Japan, South Korea, and India, upgrading and integrating these countries' defense systems. This initiative aims to limit Chinese missiles from crossing their airspace, thereby weakening the strategic threat capabilities of Chinese and Russian nuclear weapons. This defense upgrade could force China and Russia to seek new technological breakthroughs, potentially triggering a new arms race and imposing significant burdens on their economies and industrial chains. These actions by the U.S., including potential economic disengagement with China, could lead to massive employment issues and social unrest in China, possibly prompting the country to consider extreme measures, including military governance and initiating war.